In this video, I want to explain sequence selection and iteration in Java. What are sequence selection and iteration? There's some fund fundamental programming concepts. Essentially, it's the order in which we do a series of steps when we are writing steps as part of a program. Maybe we'll do them all in a line, all in order. That would be sequence. So sequence performs steps in a predetermined order. And I'll have some examples on the slides that follow this. Selection means we're going to make a decision and take an action based on that decision. In other words, if it's cold out, I will wear a coat. If it's not cold out, if it's warm out, I will not wear a coat. So I'm either going to wear a coat or I'm not going to wear a coat. And the temperature outside is going to determine whether or not I wear a coat. That is selection. Only one of the two outcomes will happen. Iteration means we are performing the same action over a collection of similar objects. That's, in other words, repetition. So I go to the grocery store and maybe I buy the same items every Sunday at the grocery store and come home. So every Sunday, wake up, go to the store, come home. That's an example of iteration, something that happens over and over again. Or I'm cutting up cake at a birthday party. I want to make sure that everybody gets cake. There are 13 people at the birthday party. I'm going to give each of those 13 people a piece of cake. So giving a piece of cake is the step I'm performing, and I'm iterating over all of the attendees at the birthday party. So let's start with sequence. Sequence are a, steps, uh, a series of steps that occur in a predefined order. Uh, all steps are going to execute exactly one time, no more, no less. And these lines are typically going to terminate with a semicolon in the Java programming language. There are some programming languages like Kotlin where semicolon is optional, but nonetheless in Java, the steps, not the method, but the steps itself will terminate with a semicolon. I pulled up some source code from a time I taught this class in a previous semester, so I wouldn't expect you to be familiar with everything that's going on in the source code here. But what you can see is that everything is tabbed at the same tab stop. And also, aside from the open curly that starts the method, there are no other curlies, there are no other, no other blocks inside of this sequence here. So it's going to run the step number one here, whoops, uh, step number two, step number three, step number four, all the way until it's complete. That's sequence. Think of sequence as the directions that you take to get somewhere. You have to drive on every single road. You can't skip a road, and ideally you don't want to hit the same piece of road twice uh, in one journey, because if, di if you did, you were probably going in a circle or something like that. So a real life example of sequence, wake up, shower, get dressed, start the car, drive the car, go to school. You're going to do each of these steps, but more importantly, you're going to do them all in this predefined order. If you did them out of order, it might look a little bit funny. The next one is selection. Selection is where we are going to pick or select one out of several possible outcomes. We typically know this in programming terms by using if, if else, if, else if, else, and several other constructions where we say, if this condition is true, then have this outcome. Else, if that condition is not true, then have a different outcome. We're only going to do one of these two outcomes at a time. Here again, I pulled some source code from a previous semester when I taught this class. And what you see here is we have the word if, we have an open and closed parenthesis, and in between that open and closed parenthesis is going to be some comparison expression or some kind of expression which is going to evaluate to true or false, oftentimes by using a comparison operator. So you see battery level is less than battery threshold. Is that true? If so, we do, we do what falls in this first block, which is defined by the open curly and the closed curly. If it's not true, then we do what's in the second block, which is defined by the open curly and closed curly. Here again, if you're not familiar with the syntax of programming, not to worry. The idea is that we have, a, we have two different blocks, only one will execute, and the outcome of this if test, whether it's true or false, will determine whether the first one executes or whether the second block executes. So uh, we have typically an if, if else, so on and so forth. We'll also typically have some comparison operators. For numbers, double equals means they're equal to each other. That says return true if the numbers on either side of this double equals are equal. Exclamation equals means return true if they are not equal. Greater than equal, of course, means return true if the one on the left is greater than or equal to the one on the right. 
Greater than means the one on the left has to be greater than, not just greater than or equal to the one on the right, and then less than and equal and less than, you probably get the idea from here. That's how we are going to compare numbers as we're doing up at the top of this selection. For strings or characters, we'll not use these comparison operators up above, particularly in Java. In .NET, a lot of times you can use that double equals, but not so in Java. In Java, we have to use some methods. Equals, which is a case-sensitive comparison, equals ignore case, which is a case-insensitive comparison, so case is not important, and then contains, which means this one string contains another. And then for a Boolean comparison, it's simply going to evaluate to true or false. So here's a more, uh, here's a more complex selection example. In this case, we're looking for some validation steps. We need to make sure that we have chosen the correct combination of a cab and bed length for a pickup truck. On a compact pickup truck, oftentimes you can't have a double cab where you have four full doors and an extended bed. You can either have the double cab or the extended bed, but not both, because simply the chassis isn't long enough to support both. So in this case, we're going through a series of comparisons. You see, this one's very complex because we have one, whoops, we have one, two, three, four different possible outcomes and only one of the four can execute. The first if test, if that becomes true, we execute the first one uh, and we skip all that follow. If the second one is true, uh, but the first one is not true, then we execute the second block and we skip all that follow, so on and so forth. Uh, if none of them are true, then we fall over to the else block and we say, okay, nothing above was true, so we're going to run the else block. So in one single running of this program, we wouldn't have two of these blocks execute simultaneously. Only one's going to execute. A good example of this, uh, when I lived in Kentucky and, and, and worked in the northern Cincinnati suburbs, uh, a lot of times if it was raining heavily, I'd take a look at traffic. And if 75 was delayed more than 25 minutes, a lot of times it was easier to take I-71 and then cut over on 275. But I wouldn't do both simultaneously. I wouldn't take both 71 and 75 because I can't be in two places at once. So 75 is usually faster in good weather. 71 is usually uh, has a little advantage over 75 when the weather is bad. Uh, I could get into that, but that's a whole other story. 71 is a little bit newer, a little less traveled, and a little less interstate. So I find it backs up a little bit less. Iteration is where we want to repeat an action over and over again, the same action. So it's similar to selection where we have some kind of comparison operation and then a block. The only difference is with selection, only one of a series of blocks will execute. In iteration, we're taking the block and we're executing it over and over and over again. So this is an example of iteration. Again, a, a, a snippet from this class previously, so I wouldn't expect you to know what all the, these lines are doing. But uh, essentially, we have a, the start of a loop here. It starts with the word for. We have the opening of the block, which is our curly, and the closing of the block down here, and then the sequence of steps that are going to run. We're going to repeat the sequence of steps until the test, i is less than trip counter, no longer executes to true, evaluates to true. We'll have plenty of time to look at examples of this throughout the semester. I just want to introduce the concepts early so you can have an idea of what's coming. An example of iteration. Every day, is the semester still in progress? And is it a weekday? Then go to school. So you see Monday I'm gonna do this activity, Tuesday I'm going to repeat it, Wednesday I'll repeat it, Thursday I'll repeat it, Friday I'll repeat it. Uh, so this is a, an action that repeats Monday through Friday of every week. And that's a look at sequence selection and iteration. Stay tuned for several videos where we are going to show some hands-on examples of these. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.